Hey, Ethan here. Um, I wanted to make a video about this because um, it's something that I've been uh, kind of noticing has been, I've been noticing people asking these kinds of questions more and more, you know, like you go to functions or events, you know, social networking, you just randomly meet people and, um, and you know, you get into conversation, they say, oh, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do for a living? Um, you know, I'm, I'm an essay, so I kind of, depending on who the person is, I explain what that what that is in <clears throat> simple terms or more technical terms. Um, but, you know, when, when I come across people that are, uh, you know, either freshly out of college or they're just starting their career um, in the technology world, right? You know, software engineers or, or the such, and uh, say, oh, you're a solution architect. Oh, interesting. You know, that's something I've been considering that I want to do, and you know, it could be cool. Um, and uh, and they ask, so like, you know, what's it like? You know, what are what kind of what's the kind of skill sets you need? Do you need to be a programmer? Do you need to be like a sales guy? Um, do you like you know what's the career path like? What 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 can you expect out of the role? You know, where can you go with that? Um, with that career path and that trajectory. Um, and I, I know it's a loaded subject and there's a lot to discuss, there's a lot of aspects to it, but the part that I wanna, I wanna kinda, you know, focus on a bit here is the part around, you know, what is the right skill set for a solutions architect or, you know, an S whatever, a solutions architect, a solutions engineer, sales engineer, you know, they're all the same thing. Um, <clears throat> And, it, and it's something that I think that not a lot of people understand really well, unfortunately. Um, the and, I, and again, you know, this is all just my own personal belief based off of, you know, my 10 plus years of experience in the industry and in, in the role and stuff. And um, and yeah, I mean, my, my personal opinion is that, you know, you as I'm sure a lot of you are, who are watching this are aware, you know, if anybody is even watching this, my first video, so who knows if anybody anybody's even gonna watch us or or give a shit. But um, you know, you you need a mixture of two core skills, I would say, right? You know, the, on the one hand, you need the the the, uh, the the soft skills, right? You need to be able to communicate effectively. You need to be able to, you know, ex articulate to, you know, executives, uh, VPs, SVPs, C-level executives, depending on the type of product and the type of customer you have, right? Um, you need to be able to, you know, give oral demonstrations and come across like you know what you're talking about, you know, being able to, you know, explain things in the right way, being able to understand, you know, when when somebody, when you're, you're on an email thread, you know, should you CC this person? If you don't, will somebody else, you know, understanding the nuances of how, you know, emails work. And, you know, I, I mean, it's, it's a whole subject of, of soft skills that you need for this role, right? Um, at the same time, you also have to have the right technical skills. And this is the point, this is really the point I think that a lot of people, especially hiring managers, don't really understand. Um, I've hired, you know, plenty of people over the course of my career and I've, I've, I've dealt with, with hiring processes and it's just, people don't get it. I mean, you, you yeah, you can find people who have soft skills. I mean, I don't, I don't think that's particularly hard. And I mean, no disrespect, I know a lot of excellent, talented salespeople, but you know, the truth is that, you know, salespeople are not that difficult to come across, right? All you need is, is per perseverance. You need, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna get into what makes a good salesperson a good salesperson, but like there are a lot more sale, a lot more good salespeople, I think, than good essays, right? And I think it's it, there's, a, there's a really, you know, a real reason for that and I, I think it comes down to the technical skills right so what I'm trying to say is that you've got to be an effective essay you have to know your shit right you can't just walk into a customer uh, you know an on-site meeting or walk into a customer's uh, on even even just join a call and you know talk to a customer and not understand kind of basic fundamental things about you know, you know, programming and architecture and technologies and stuff like you can't just, I, I personally, again, my opinion, um, so take it for what it's worth, but my opinion, I, th I think it's not just enough to know how to use your product, how to message your product. That's, 
that's like the basics. I mean, that's, that's, that's those are givens. I think to be a really good essay, you need to be able to know, you need to be a programmer, right? You need to have that background. Like, sure, an essay doesn't necessarily, unless, you know, you're at Google or somewhere where you're doing like 70% of your time you're coding as an essay, um, you need to you need to at least have that background, like coming from the world of being a programmer, being a full stack engineer, a sysadmin, whatever. Like you need to be able to go into a meeting with a customer, and when they talk about you know infrastructure, they talk about EC2 instances or Azure functions, whatever their platform is. They're talking about you know Java classes and you know how are we going to integrate with this API, and you know are we going to use Auth0 as our provider, or, um, like. You need to know that Auth0 is not actually a, an authentication mechanism. I've had uh, people on in interviews, like, it's just been ridiculous. They're like, well, we, we would use Auth0, but okay, that's your provider, but like, well, what kind of, uh, um, you know, mechanism, like, what kind of authentication handshake system is that? Are you talking about you know, like, Auth0? Like, uh, yeah, okay, you clearly don't really know, understand what you're talking about. You know that there's a technology, sorry, a, a company called Auth0, but. Um, you know, you're really talking about, you know, the handshaking system, like are you using bearer tokens? Are you using, um, you know, the, what kind of standard for authentication are you using, right? That's really the question. So anyways, I'm, I'm derailing a little bit, but my point is like, you have to be able to understand these core fundamental aspects of, you know, you know, programming. Like, so like I, I was talking to a friend the other day, like, you know, he was asking me, so what, what is the right way to achieve or to get to become an SA? And I, I told him that, you know, if you want to be a really good essay, you need to have, a, in my, again, again, in my opinion, I think you need to have like a solid five years of full, like ideally, right? Ideally full stack engineering development kind of experience, right? And I don't just mean front and back, man. I, I mean like the full, full cycle, right? So knowing how to, how to code, on the front end, knowing JavaScript, you know, Angular, React, Ember, whatever it is that floats your boat, right? I'm um, not gonna get into the whole framework wars here thing type of thing, but you gotta know how like how to interact with DOM. You gotta understand how the client side of things works, right? You have to understand the back end, like, you know, get some PHP experience. Uh, I know PHP, right? Or Java or whatever, like, you know, Node even, like just understanding how the back end fits into the things, right? Like, you know, you have APIs, how to create an API, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then not just, you know, that, that that's a great start, but I think also, you know, completing the full cycle of being a sysadmin as well, right? Being able to know how to administrate servers, how to create disaster recovery policies, right? How to do all these types of things, you know, having some basic fundamental knowledge of like, you know, what, uh, you know, what are, what, what is a CLI, you know, like how do you, how do you download stuff from the AWS S3 bucket with via CLI, right? How do you, what's an awk, right? What's a sed, what's, you know, cat, tail, nano, like all these basic things that you would need, you know, for server administration, understanding like, you know, the, what, what's, what's set, what is CentOS? Like what I talked to, I had it, I remember once I was interviewing somebody and I'm like, you know, so what kind of uh, operating systems uh, have you, have you, so he's like, you know, Microsoft. I'm like, okay, um, any server experience? Yeah, with Microsoft server. I'm like, uh, R2, he's like, are you talking, is that a Star Wars reference? I mean, uh, so like, and I was like, okay, do you have any Linux experience? Like, yeah, you know, I've got Red Hat experience. I gave him a pass on that because, okay, uh, I would have preferred him to say, you know, R-H-E-A-L or CentOS or whatever. But, you know, th th those are the kinds of things that, you know, again, in my opinion, I think that's what separates, you know, the average or mediocre essay from being a truly exceptional essay, right? Because when you go into a customer, again, when you're going and you're just talking about your products, you know, you know sure, you can maybe talk about your product, but part of, part of the role of the essay is to get the, your customer or whoever it is you're dealing with, whether it's an internal customer or an external customer, to have faith in you that you are the expert and getting to that part where the customer truly trusts you that you're really the expert you know your shiz like that that's not just your product because again anybody can you know study for a couple of weeks and kind of you know, depending on the product figure out what it is right but when you go to a customer and you're like they're talking about oh 
you know, we got to think about how are we going to integrate with this uh, EC2 instance? Are we going to use a Lambda function? Should we use a Lambda function? Or, you know, should we just use, uh, you know, maybe a, a managed Kafka service uh, and just have, you know, doing using a queue system and all that kind of stuff. And, and you, you know, opening your mouth and adding value to that conversation, even though may, maybe your whole platform is on, you know, Microsoft Azure or on-premise or whatever. But the fact that um, you are are adding value there and you are perhaps giving a, a useful suggestion generates trust generates credibility with your customer and then they start to see you not just oh you know ethan knows about his product like he's knowledgeable about it but but he, he becomes ethan is really knowledgeable ethan knows about stuff like you know if if he 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 just gave us this really interesting concept maybe we're gonna maybe we'll, we'll we'll try it out maybe maybe it's bullshit right maybe he doesn't really know what he's talking about but at least he understands what lambda is he knows what api gateway is he knows that we're developing in java he knows what typecast you know, he knows what all these different things are and so he's not just you know selling his product or he's not just you know talking to us about implementing his product he actually knows stuff so you know maybe it's worth hearing him out because he might be able to explain it in a different way or, or whatever um anyways that's just something i just wanted to get out there it's something i've been you know noticing for a while already that <clears throat> people just they, they try and get into this technical account management this solutions consultant the solutions engineer or solutions architect or whatever role without really really understanding what is involved and what you need in order to be really successful. So um, hopefully this is interesting or not. Um, but uh, if you feel that it was interesting, great. I'm happy you enjoyed it. If you stick around, if, if you're still watching this, then I guess you did enjoy it. And um, then that, that, that's awesome. Um, and, uh, like I said, this is a really loaded subject. So if, uh, if you, if anybody wants me, if anybody's watching this and wants me to do any kind of follow up or any other kind of, uh, you know, other video relating on this that I can expand on, happy to do that. Um, otherwise, thank you for watching. Um, honestly, subscribe, don't subscribe. I don't care. Um, I'm, I'm just doing this. I just felt like doing this video. Um, so thanks for watching and, um, maybe do a follow up, maybe not. We'll see. All right.